Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do chapter 28 for White Silk Lover. And if you uh, happen to hear a few noises in the background, as always, that's my dog. Chapter 28, Sunday, May 2nd, 6 a.m. Tomas, another concert tonight. I needed coffee, very strong coffee. I woke, warm. Kobe cuddled into me, my arm draped over him as if to protect him. It's been a long time since somebody needed me. I'm finally at peace. As I shifted position so I can see him sleeping, he rolled back, his left arm gently flinging to the other side of the bed. His hand must have hit something, because he winced in his sleep. I love you, I whispered, and got up. Kobe's eyes peeked open, and he mumbled, I love the way your hair looks. You are pretty stylish, too, I said, leaning down and kissing him. Go back to sleep. The personal chef had not arrived, which meant no caffeine. I got a large pot of coffee started, and while it brewed, I stepped onto the deck. It's still early. The sky was covered with clouds, and the morning light changed them to flame. The light hadn't decided whether to be reddish or gold. It's a mixture of both. It's beautiful, and I can enjoy the stillness. Five minutes later, Kobe brought me a cup of coffee, went inside and grabbed him for himself. He had the sling on, the hand in the brace, fingers scrunched tight together. He stood next to me, blowing on his coffee. I took the brace and sling off, and slowly massaged his left hand. The fingers didn't stretch out, but curled inward when I let go of them. Kobe tried not to wince, but the muscles in his hand were tight and stiff. His right hand was normal. I need to get a shower, I said. Do you want to join me? Kobe's eyebrow went up. So did half of a smile. I'd love to, but I have to wait until after tomorrow. I was only thinking of conserving water. What were you thinking? I flirted. Kobe's smile lit up his face. How about a rain check? The jet's already arranged. I'm coming to your recital, boyfriend, I said and kissed him. He tasted of coffee. Do you think you'll need a shower after that? Kobe sipped his coffee and said, plan on it. A farewell kiss, and it's off to the shower, and then to get dressed. Kobe followed. When we were ready, the chef had arrived and was making pancakes and waffles and fried ham and bacon and eggs. In walked Les. He was frowning. Our crew called, and we have an issue. Lights again, and something about the stage. It seems the arena double-booked today, with a national touring company headlining some play. They pushed the play to tomorrow, but they have sent an advanced crew to redesign the stage. They want to tear our setup apart and begin installing stage sets. They can't do that because we have a concert tonight. So we have to figure out a way to share. That will complicate things. Do we need another rehearsal? I said. It might be a good idea, Les said and poured himself a cup of coffee. Sorry, Kobe. We'll make it fast so you guys can do something later. Tomas told me you're not leaving until tomorrow, right? He rearranged my flight until noon. But don't worry about me. I have two finals I need to study for, Kobe said. The personal chef handed him a plate of pancakes. Just come get me when you're ready. I'll be sitting on the deck, studying my brains out. Lindsay, Javier, and Maya came out of the rooms and sat with us. Sam did not. He's still sleeping it off, Javier said. But he didn't throw up this time. Not again, I said. Somebody else try waking him. Last time I did, it didn't go well. Lindsay shrugged. Sure. She walked over to the room Sam shared with Javier, opened the door and yelled, Early rehearsal, miss it, and they'll dock your pay. Sam muttered something profane. Tomas will dock my pay. Ooh, I'm scared. Boss is listening, by the way, so be nice. She closed the door. You can tell Tomas to F himself. I'm going back to bed. 
Sunday, May 2nd, 9 a.m. Kobe. Studying my notes on the deck was much better than studying them at home or in the library. It was all in the cloud anyway. As long as I had a Wi-Fi connection, I had everything they had given me, and I had volumes to go through. Some teachers gave you a test guide so you'll know what to study. Some don't. Neither of mine did. Dr. Garnier was famous for expecting obscure references in her tests. She was quite fond of essays. Her only hint? Essay questions. Four-hour time limit. I expect detail. And Kobe. I expect a song as well. I didn't know if the last part was a joke or not, so I planned on making one anyway. One-handed, I practiced the song for the recital. It didn't sound right without both hands and my left hand's fingers ached when anything touched them. Like it or not, and I didn't. I couldn't use my left hand. If something didn't change, I'd have to back out of the recital. The doctor had said four weeks of immobility. I'd have to back out anyway. The personal chef left an amazing carved fruit tray and more coffee. I took them both to the deck and plowed through my notes again. We had an online text, so I browsed through that as well. As I pulled up old tests to look over, Sam climbed into his car. 30 minutes after everybody else left? 60 minutes? He didn't see me, but he had his suitcase with him. I thought the band didn't leave until tomorrow. Stop getting distracted. Finals take priority. May 2nd, Sunday, 10 a.m. Tomas. What made the stage odd was two sets of techs working on two different stage setups. Mine, of course, were trying to preserve what we had, and the new guys were trying to dissemble it and install something for the play that started tomorrow night. As they tried to set up, it moved all of us around. Lindsay didn't like that, because the usual place for her keyboards was shifted. To make it worse, the plugs she needed were too far away, and the longest cords we had were too short. Les yelled on the phone to the owners of the arena. Javier and Lindsay worked with our techs to redesign the layout so everybody could be happy. A couple of technicians worked on the lights, and another worked on the pyrotechnics. The stage hadn't been this disorganized since the beginning practices back in August. Behind us... An old western saloon took shape. I guess Sterling Locke is a country singer now. Javier's equipment was the most flexible to move around. Then the drums. But not the keyboards. I was getting a really bad headache. I went back to my dressing room. Maya was already there, lining up the costumes for tonight. We'd start with black jeans silver form-fitting tee and a new jacket, black leather with red leather trim and a single white leather stripe on the left side. Maya held it out for me to try. It came in yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to open the package until this morning. It had a thermal lining, but I've removed it. Snug. It hugged me almost as if it were painted on. I like it. A lot. You should. 2500 We only have the one, and when the tour is over, it's yours. I have expensive tastes, I said. She gave a small chuckle. I have an idea, but I have to clear it with Les first. But were you ever planning on wearing the old pants or the mesh tanks again? Sorry, I said. It's just not me. Why? You know our thief, Maya said. I was thinking of copying them. We could auction them off. Authentic and documented, Sterling Locke approved with an autographed card or something, and throw ourselves one huge party. That's a great idea, I said. The best part is, I would never have to see those pants again. This jacket is my new style. Maya smiled and took the jacket from me and hung it up. That's what I'd hope you'd say. I'll work up a few ideas and talk to Les after the stage issues are solved. As she left, I did a once-over through the dressing room. My makeup, wig, tattoos, piercings, pitcher, and basin with water 
to apply the tattoos were all on the table. There is enough tattoos and costumes that we could dress up Kobe. We could have two sterling locks on stage. I took a squealer from a pair of pants and put it into the pocket of the jacket. I wasn't going to lose another jacket, especially one as nice as this. But with only a week left, who would steal anything now? Kobe's gadgets hadn't worked, but it was better than nothing. I bet Kobe would like the jacket, though. If Maya found a second one, Kobe and I would have matching jackets. Before I could text Maya, my phone rang. Les, what's up, I said. Where are you? Dressing room. I was chatting with Maya about tonight's wardrobe. She's had an interesting idea she wants to tell you. Stay there. I'm coming up. We have a completely different setup for tonight. The word of the day is backwards, and I think it will be challenging. You better let Kobe know that he will have more study time than he thinks. Great. Third to last show, and it's going to be a mess. I walked into the bathroom, splashed water on my face, and washed my hands. I needed Kobe's aspirin. The fire alarm went off. Loud. Ear-piercing. Definitely a high-pitched squeal. One I had heard before. Back on the private jet. Kobe's squealers finally worked. I ran. Sam stood at the door of my dressing room, holding his suitcase, his mouth open, and he stared at his suitcase. The horrible noise came from inside the suitcase. Even muffled, it hurt my ears. Kobe was right. The squealers didn't have much range. What's that noise? Les yelled from the hallway. I walked over to the wall and turned off the squealer system. Security system. Kobe got it for me and I've been experimenting with it. I placed a sensor in the jacket's pocket. Javier ran up. Was that the fire alarm? No, Joey said behind him. She folded her arms and stood in the doorway, preventing Sam from leaving. Sam, open the suitcase, I said. No, Sam said. Then I will, Maya said, pushing in. She reached for the case, but Sam jerked it away. Les entered and caught it. He took the case away and opened it. My new jacket fell out. A mesh shirt, the two tight pants, some fake tattoos, some music, guitar picks, drumsticks, a lot of random papers, microphone covers. Were those my socks? I reached in the suitcase and held up a large Ziploc containing the boxer briefs I wore yesterday? Sam, I asked, are you on a stealing trip? Explain. What's the big deal? This is loose change for you. I yelled, that's my new jacket. It's for tonight. My picks, Javier said. I just got those in. Albert stood behind Joy with Lindsay right behind him. Sam looked at all of us and paled. Before anyone could do anything, Maya marched over to Sam and grabbed the jacket. Do you know how much this costs and you're stealing it? We don't have a budget anymore. Sam didn't say a word. I walked over and glanced in the case. An auction list for curtain call 234 lay among the spilled papers. I pulled it out. It listed everything that had been stolen, placed on auction, and who bought it, and their contact information, like email addresses, regular addresses, and phone numbers. One of the latest auctions turned my stomach. It was the paper Kobe and I had worked on at Club Diggory. It said the final price, $3,700. It was shipped to Las Vegas. Kobe Wood had bought it three days ago. This morning's pancakes became a lump in my stomach and the headache I had got worse. Wasn't that how much Kobe paid for a semester's tuition? Did he have any money left? Why didn't he say anything? The answer was obvious. Before we could talk, he hurt his hand so me and my brother could get out of the banquet hall. Then I pushed him into a meltdown and we went to the doctor. He was terrified I would dump him on the spot just like his parents did. Yeah, he was distracted. Kobe's not at fault here. 
Anger wasn't what I would use to describe what I felt right now. It was stronger. It wasn't aimed at Kobe. Sam, I said, and forced my hands to unclench. You made Kobe buy our song from you? Kobe plays the piano. Kobe's getting a degree. Poor Kobe hurt his hand. I outbid him three times to make him pay more. Sam stared at me and gave me a very cold smile. That was my secret revenge on you and your little puppy. Thank you, everybody, for sharing Chapter 28 with me. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace.